everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you my Pick a Stick Challenge artist trading card uh, made with the three one word prompts that were drawn randomly for the month of May 2018. The first prompt was Crush. <laughs> and I could think of a few things to do with that. I was thinking about like a crush that you might have on someone or something like that. But what I really wanted to do was just crush something. It's just been one of those days. So I got out some intense blocks. They are a water soluble pigment that becomes permanent when it's dry after being activated with water. And these blocks don't have any wood around them, so they're just crumbly. And one of the options that they show to do with these is to grate them and then use them as a, in a shaker, like you would with like brushos or something like that, can Oliver pigment or whatever. So that gave me the idea of just breaking some of it off and then crushing it with my jewelry hammer. So that satisfied the first prompt of crush. And then I continued to use these blocks to draw on the background. I made the background out of a couple different colors of blue that I crushed on there and I sprayed some water on it. Uh, the substrate is a three and a half by two and a half inch piece of confetti cardstock, which is kind of a heavyweight white cardstock that has some flex in it. Probably should have used watercolor paper, but I had this laying there and I just grabbed it and cut it into the right sizes. So I was making an underground, I mean not, not underground, underwater scene, so I drew in some coral uh, using the blocks, the edges of the blocks. You can draw with them and then I spritzed it with a little bit of water to activate it and then heat set it. And then I'm using a white Posca pen just to add in some more details and um, a, a few droplets or splashes or splatters or whatever you want to call them uh, to kind of look like bubbles just to create my little underwater scene. Now, what made me think of doing that? Well, the color for this particular challenge is coral. And I just thought it would be funny to have coral on a coral challenge. So it could be coral coral. <laughs> That's just the little weird things I think of. So my next step was, or prompt was crazy. And boy, that one can be expanded as big as the universe. You can have so many ideas with that one word. But I was thinking of a bar that I went to a long time ago. Um, I think it was in Hawaii, but I, I attended it quite a few times on my vacation and it was called Crazy Fish. And there was this, this you know, on the sign was this crazy looking fish and I thought, I thought of that when I thought of the prompt crazy. So I decided to draw a crazy looking fish. So this is another piece of that same uh, confetti card stock. And I'm using my mechanical pencil with uh, tubey graphite in it to draw my crazy fish. And then I'm going to color it. Um, first, I'm going to finish drawing it. <laughs> I have a little teeny tiny piece of my white eraser, my favorite eraser. It's just so tiny now. I need to get a new one. <laughs> but I just love that eraser so much that I haven't gotten a new piece. Um, get out my illustration pins. These are Fabric Castell pit pins, and there's a bunch of different nibs in my little set. These are India ink. So once they're dry, they're permanent. So I can color over the top of them without worrying about them smearing or smudging or anything like that. So that's what I plan to do. So I draw over my lines using the medium bullet tip and the small bullet tip. Um, it's always a good idea to vary your line weight when you're doing an illustration. And then I give that a really good dry before I use my teeny tiny little piece of eraser <laughs> to erase the pencil lines. So tiny, so cute. So then I get out my charts for my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers, which I planned to color this with. And I really couldn't find in my huge set of markers quite the colors I wanted. I was trying to do some, some you know, varied coloring where you use different tones of the same color to make 
the coloring more interesting, but I wanted to use this um, fluorescent, fluorescent pink, fluorescent orange. I don't know. I just, I thought that color went well with my background and I didn't really have anything to go with it. So then I was looking for other colors. It's a good idea to swatch out your markers, particularly the Spectrum Noir, because the color on the end of the marker is not correct in all cases on these markers. So you can't just look at the colors at the ends of the pins on your rack and say, oh, I need that color, that color. You've got to really look at the chart. So that chart is available on the Spectrum Noir um, website to download and print. And so I did, and I swatched them. So I've got a couple different colors of a yellowy green, and I'm coloring in part of the fish with that and trying to make a shadow of a darker color around the edges and then a lighter color in the middle, which is what I like to do with alcohol markers. But I again didn't have three colors and I didn't really have a dark color that went with that citrus green yellow color. So I do end up finally getting out of gray to make the shadows a little bit darker. But I'm also using this blender pin that um, is part of this my Spectrum Noir set and it the it's broken. I've never even opened it before and it's already broken. Uh, the, the pointy tip on the end is like jammed and I can't get it open and it does not smell good so I won't be using this very much. It made me, um, I'm very sensitive to chemical smells and it was just blah, it smelled bad. But anyway, that's what I was using to blend the fluorescent trying to get multiple tones of that color and then I used it also on this uh, purpley color, purpley pink magenta color to same type of an idea to blend it um, on the, the middle of the lip of the fish. And then I got out a darker gray to color in the inside of the mouth and the eyeballs. I didn't want to go pure black. I wanted to go gray. I also used um, a lighter gray to go around the edges, which it's it's kind of hard to see it subtle, but um, it helped with adding in some shadow around the edges of the fish, the fish's main body. Then I fussy cut it and I'm using the brush marker from my illustration pens to go around all those white edges. When you, when you have something that's colored and then it has black and then the edges that you've cut out are all white, they can show. So I wanted to make sure that they were all completely covered and colored in and touched up all the way around the edges. So then I'm going to put this fish on my card, obviously, but I do have one more prompt. The next prompt was mix. And I remember on this challenge is a challenge that's brought to, brought to you from me, Chelsea, and my friend Peg Robinson. We run the group. It's a Facebook group. And you can go link to the link below, click on it, and then go and ask to join and answer the questions to join the challenge. But they're one word prompts and in the if in the artist trading card there has there's three. And so I needed to use all three obviously because that's the challenge. <laughs> so mix. I decided to get some molding paste and mix some different acrylic paint into it using a spatula to make a colored texture paste and then put it on the card through a stencil. So I made coral because that is the color um, for the challenge. That's the color pick for the challenge. And I put it through this stencil. I don't even know what it's called, but I will make sure it's linked in the description box below. I know it's from Crafters Workshop, but I don't know what it's called. Um, it's a useful one. It has, um, I guess, nine different patterns on it. Small, but for something like this, it works out really well. And so that was my mix prompt. So then all I'm going to do to finish this up is I'm going to put my fish on. And I'm using some foam squares for that. These are ones that uh, are from uh, Thermoweb. And they're pretty puffy. They're puffier than I expected. And they're a little bit more difficult to get the backs off than I expected. I thought they were just going to pop right off, but they didn't want to. It's the first time I've used them, but they're small foam squares just to kind of give that fish dimension off the card. And then I am going to back it using a piece of cardstock. The name of it is Cameo Coral. 
It's an old Stampin' Up! color. Doubt they still have it. But, um, you know, since the color was coral, I went with that. <laughs> Sticking that down with some permanent glue stick from Elmer's. It's called Craft Stick, I think. And touching up a little bit with my white Posca pen, and then I am almost done. I decided to add the words Crazy Fish, and I'm using my brother P-Touch label maker has five different sizes of fonts and I pick the font and then I type it print it out and it comes out on a white tape you can also get clear tape and blue tape and all kinds of stuff but I just have the white so that's going to be my final touch on my card I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please remember to give it a thumbs up leave me a comment or question come over and join the Facebook group if you want to be challenged by these randomly drawn one word prompt challenges and um you know, subscribe if you haven't, all those things. This is a pretty fun challenge, and this month it's a pretty challenging challenge. So I hope that you join us. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.